Oh, hot. Yep. That was it. That was it? Yeah. Oh, come on. Too I'm hot. doing live on Facebook. I can't <laughs> get it. I'll just do this. All right. Air conditioned comfort in our library. Donna's heckling from the side. Oh, I can see it. Well, I'm air conditioned. Right. It's not 100 in the in my room, but. All right. Oh, hey, we're live on Facebook. Hey, guess what? On Facebook, I just saw a year ago today was the eclipse. Did you know that? That was today? A year that ago? That was today, a year ago. Yeah, I took the day off. We were that all was really outside. Cool. Did, you guys get to, did you guys get to do that? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I had to work, but I remember I was going to another, from one training to another, and I like ran home and looked at the thing, and I saw a guy across the street had a welding, his welding helmet oh, on. yeah to watch you got to watch that that wasn't all safe you know was, kids out there watch out next yeah. time i think it's coming back on your neck of the woods in the texas area in a couple of years yeah soon um, yeah it's gonna be actually pretty soon that's cool we don't have to yeah. wait hundreds of years again i know i love i went i drove up to wyoming you know not the nice part of wyoming but it was nice hey patricia also we got aaron amber christy Corey, donna aaron marta mr mo patricia drake Serena, Vera, and yeah. Oh, sorry. hi, Aaron. Yeah, yeah. All right. I don't know that Aaron. That's not oh. my Aaron, but it's an Aaron. I know. It's an Aaron. Wow. Well, it's an well, Aaron. Hey, I know. We're live with uh, what's your name again? Colleen Graves, something <laughs> like that. Author of all these awesome books. I love your big book of maker projects, and oh, I thank have you. Not yet read the evil science. I mean, the, the evil genius science. I know. I need to. I'm you gonna, haven't. I know I'm going to order it. I'm going to put that on my list right now. I'm going to order it when I get off. I know on Amazon. I'll do I it like when... to point out that I am the co-author of co -author. all these books with my husband, Aaron, and he is, the, he's my better half. So. Well, and you guys are still, I mean, and this, that's probably a pretty cool thing that you guys did it together and you're still married and having a thriving <laughs> marriage. So this is good. <laughs> um, for everybody that knows, we're going to kind of banter a little bit because because Colleen and I had a great time at ISTE this year and hung out. And um, so a lot of this, though I'm doing this for, for free maker education training for everyone, um, a lot of it is just to hang out with friends at summer. And um, so we had Patrick and Aaron uh, Riley on. Patrick, uh, was it Mac? Mac oh, hi, Patrick and Aaron. It's yeah. all my friends. I wish we could just now, we should just open them. Uh, and yeah. Krista. Oh, I know. Well, we are going to have like an open chat at the end of this. So if you guys don't know that yet, um, it'll be auto posting on your making uh, Facebook page and Twitter page as we're talking here. I think it's set to post um, right around 11, my time, 12 o'clock oh. yours. And um, we'll be doing doing another just kind of group chat where everybody gets to be on the screen and hang Yay. out and talk. So anyway, well, let's get to it. Um, we're going to talk about Makey Makey and we're going to talk about physical programming and the new scratch. Uh, version is out right now, which does a lot of cool things. Oh, and you got a little kit there. Oh, so yeah. First of all, tell, us, tell us a little bit about yourself for people that don't know. I think everybody knows, but but you had a job change now. Oh, um, yeah. Um, and so tell us a little bit about that, how that transition's going, and then let's get into kind of the how-tos of physical programming. I put that in my beautiful slide. Sure. Hey. Who am I? See? Hmm. Who am I? How's that? That's, can everyone, can everyone see it? Oh, yeah, I can see it. All right. So um, I'm the co-author of the Big Maker book and the Evil Makey book. Um, my life is crazy. <laughs> I just realized yesterday that it was four years ago I did like my first Arduino project at a public library. And um, two years later, we wrote the Big Book of Makerspace projects. And I was like writing uh, Arduino projects for that, which is crazy to me. And then we made the Makey Makey book. And um, I've been a librarian for six years, and now I am working full time for Makey Makey as their, I like to call myself the resident education guru. Nice. And, <laughs> that's just a new tag I made up. And, I like it. I like it. Yeah, it's all about, my job is all about like um, engaging the community and sharing resources for educators and being a content creator. So creating content that people need um, to do things with Makey Makey and Scratch and our new product when it comes out. So love it. Shh, can't tell you about that yet. Oh, man. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's pretty crazy that that thing with the uh, 
what's I going to say about that? Oh, I have this, uh, this other thought because I've been having this other banter online with the Tinkering Studio and Amos from uh, Lego. And we were talking about kits and the nature of kits and open-ended kits versus like a one and done type of kit. Mm -hmm. And like there are people who don't like the word kit because they don't like kids doing that. They want them out there making stuff totally free form. And I think it's like, you know, there's the best of all the worlds because we have to have accessibility for all our students, right? Like yeah. for everyone to try something. But so this weekend, I actually tried to sew a dress without a pattern, just sort of to like, see, I've been sewing for 20 years, right? Yeah. Sewing for 20 years. I should be able to just sew a dress, right? Like it's sort of that same concept. Like, do I need to follow instructions or can I just make this up? No, I cannot make a sewing a dress I actually sewed a pretty cute dress it does not fit me at all so it wasn't really about like the there's like things that you need to know sometimes that you can't know so one of my favorite things is like hacking other people's projects so like my big goal in making the big maker book and the makey makey book is like to get kids involved in making stuff and then them hacking it and doing their own ideas so like I really think everything that everything that Aaron and I tried to write has been tried to have a, a, an open end or a challenge associated with it so they could keep going, right? Like we don't want you to just make what we make. We want you to make something even better. So sometimes like that sort of makes my job as a content creator a little bit difficult and a little bit easy because I want to just give you a nice digestible nugget of thing to do. And then you go out and make something bigger and beautiful. So, yeah. um, so we're talking about physical computing and physical computing is the aspect of combining our physical world with the digital world and like makey makey is the perfect tool for that because if I'm like looking around trying to find one not like there's like a hundred of them in the house <laughs> because I mean you can do this everything you do with makey makey you can do with an Arduino but this is so much easier to start when you have no idea what you're doing um, right like it's just, it just is um, the, the key puts the key puts the key inputs like are that. already all the inputs are already programmed, right? So you're doing up, left, down. And what we always see, actually, thought I would go for this explanation of the banana piano. You always see people playing the banana piano, right? And that's because they're hooking the alligator clips to this pre-programmed uh, piano in Scratch where they're clicking the inputs and it's playing the song. So you have an input from you touching something conductive to the output in Scratch which is pretty fun. So uh, I wanted to, I can't drive my screen share. No. You can't, I can get it going. I want to get at a different window. So I guess I have to stop and share a different window. Yeah, stop That's, right. That's what happened. Okay. Well, I just yeah, want to- love, As you're doing that, I love that Scratch can be, um, you know, it gives kids and, and adults too just such an easy access into physical computing, right? So you're not just stuck in the computer, but you can do an input. And now we're seeing a lot of outputs too that you can go from making, making into scratch and then out back to the physical world. Right. So. That's actually like one of the things I'm trying to show, but I don't know that I can go to a new tab from the way that oh, I've well. done yeah, it. Wait, I can. Oh, can there you go. go. Okay. Yep. Yeah, yeah. It was just because I did a full, full screen. screen. So, yeah. So in Scratch, like this is the thing that we don't see very often is people going after the banana piano. We don't go any further than that. Like people do the banana piano and they're like, I'm done. Well, if you do, if you use makey makey like that, then yes, it's a one and done kit, but it's not, it can be so much more. So once you start learning in Scratch how to do things. So here, when I press my right arrow, you know, it plays a piano sound. So I'm broadcasting here. This is actually like a pretty convoluted way to make a piano key. I just noticed I pulled one up. It's funny. <laughs> All you really have to do is like, I can take the space. I can go to sound. And when I go to play sound and in scratch three, this is actually even more beautiful. Yep. Uh, the, the sounds for, I gotta go look for it, but you can find like the right piano key. Yep. So am I doing it? Like, some people just don't seem to know this, right? So then I can use different piano keys and I can change the way it sounds in the sound. Now I go and I'll choose F. So now when I press space, right, that's my F. Although now it's D on the picture. Cause so I like to always uh, talk to my students about that. Like a computer is only as smart as its program. So if I put the wrong code in, then the computer is not gonna fix it for me. You yeah. know, I always think that's fun. Yeah. So yeah, 
So banana pianos, like we can go further if we create our own creations in Scratch. So I wanted to show you a couple of cool things that I just recently found because Ooh. part of my job is like seeing what other people are doing. You're right. And uh, this is really cool. So this company, I'm actually like interviewing this guy because I, or guy or lady, Frazier could be a man or a woman, I guess. I don't know. Signals is in the UK and they just recently had like a day long workshop where kids created interactive art based on books that they love with Scratch. Cool. That's pretty awesome. Uh, and then Sign Lab, which is in the Netherlands, actually did this whole art piece with LEDs. And if you watch this video, like I'll share the link to this afterwards. If you watch this video, uh, as they tap certain parts of the picture, the story plays on YouTube and the lights light up on no. the art that they made. Oh, cool. <laughs> I like how you said no. No. Uh, and what's really fun is that the person at Sign Labs, uh, I was like, hey, did you, because they actually have different LEDs lighting up. And when you use a Makey Makey and you want to uh, do an out, output. Yeah, you've LED, got like a five volt. Right, right. But it actually doesn't put out five volts when you do the key press. It puts out about four and a half. Okay. Volts, just so you know, I'm mean, not just enough. me nerding out and telling you. No, no, you. I like that but it lights up on any time you press a key press. So yeah. any key press, but what they did is similar to what um, I did in the Makey Makey book. I had this one thing where I wanted the LEDs to only light up for this marble maze that I did. I used Chibitronics LEDs. Yep. And I was getting them to only light up when I did a key press. Mm -hmm. And they figured out the same thing I figured out, but did it in a totally different way. So like now I have a whole, LED tinkering day that I have to I have to plan but like I did some tinkering too because I was able to get it to do to light up brighter in some ways and darker in other mm -hmm. ways just from like messing around so from different key presses from different key press from different ways that I wired it it wasn't actually oh, uh, okay. but I could get it to light up on a different key press huh. uh, and that, so like to me that's what I love about Makey Makey is I do like I feel like I can make the interactive things I see in the world like I can make my own version of it. And um, it's just encouraged me to play with like electronics and tear apart components and see how a switch works and see how, you know, how does a tilt switch work and how does, how can I do all these things? So how can I make, you know, really complicated electronics with a Makey Makey? Um, and that's why I think it's really fun. So um, I feel like you asked me something, but I, I missed it. The other no, no, guy, I'm just, I'm like, whoa, that's I'm all I'm just saying, lots of whoa. Yeah, uh, I had a thought about it, but I can't remember about the LEDs. Um, this is really cool. I've been seeing this explode the controller uh, hashtag and it's John Lynch and uh, Zach Boston from Learn to Teach, Teach to Learn. And yeah. they are using micro bit and Makey Makey, but I made a slap switch like the one that John made. This is really simple. And I talked to John because I'm going to interview them for the blog and he had seen some of the things that we put in our book that Aaron and I put in our book and it sort of changed his way of thinking about like components. So he made these slap switches, which is really easy. It's like space, you click space on the back and earth mm -hmm. right here. And then you put these really far apart in your space, in your library or your classroom and you can play a game where you have to run back and forth and slap the switch, right? So like, it's just a really fun way to make like your own uh we don't go to Chuck E. Cheese what's the like equivalent now <laughs> I don't know Dave and Buster's or yeah, you know like yeah. your own huge game arcade right yeah. you can make your own thing so he also made these other cool things um like uh the bounce box and this rock thing where you actually can rock and tilt and I've seen that too with Mickey Mickey he uses the micro bit in that but it's really really cool stuff that's like starting to break apart components and break apart controllers and think about how they work which is important because like invention literacy is like, what's so cool about making making Right. Oh, so the coin trick. Should I unscreen share because you have to see me now? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. How do I do this? Um, just kill the. Just kill it? Oh, I can stop, kill you. share. There you go, there you go. yeah, that button. part, yeah. Sometimes I'm not very good at uh, technology. Well, that's the ironic part. I'm the same way, right? I'm, I'm like, oh, how do I go? Are we live on Facebook? I don't know. Whatever. I'm not doing this thing right now. Right. So I apologize. This is faded, but Aaron made this and it's so cool. 
and it is a coin operator for scratch games. And I'm not sure, and this is in our book, uh, but I'm not sure if I can get it where you can see it. Yep. All I the coins are all the coins are falling out at me. So I have to look, give a peek in there. And yep. when you put the coin in, then it flips a switch. Yeah, yeah. And then you just program it in scratch to not start the game until you put the coin in. Nice. It's genius. So when when the whatever key is pressed, then it's the same thing as clicking the flag. Right. Kind of thing. Yeah. Right. It clicks the flag. It starts the game. So like it'll broadcast to start the game. I'm like looking for it in the book now to, uh, cause the book picture is probably easier to see. <laughs> da, 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 da. And guys, as uh, people in the chat room, feel free to ask questions, Q and a, or ask questions in the chat and we'll kind of get them at the end or in the middle. Oh, so that's part of this wacky, uh, fortune teller he built. So that like tells your fortune, but the game here it is. That's a much better picture than me trying to show you. Oh, yeah. Don't tweet it, that's that fancy light box that you showed me earlier. Yeah, right. That's because yeah. you have a light box. It makes it easier to see. But it's just really cool. Like, if you start thinking about, like, how does a coin operator work? Oh, maybe I can make my own coin operator. That's, to me, the beauty of, of making Mickey. That I'm not seeing a lot of other people do yet. Like, I want to yeah. see it. I want to see more people go crazy, you know? Well, it's just such an easy entryway to get into. What, what didn't you say... Um, the electronics at ISTE, the, the paper circuits is like the gateway drug to, to electronics. I think making Mickey yeah. is kind of the gateway drug to, to physical computing. Right. right. That's I totally I actually totally say that. Yeah, it's the physical gateway. The physical gateway? Yeah, I sure. Usually, I usually say it's the gateway to physical computing. I don't usually go. put the drug part. Because well, I'm you know. Educator and hey, I well, I know. <laughs> don't worry. We're, we're, I'll, I'll take that part out. Coffee, I'll give I'll you some Take coffee. that part out. All right. All right, back to your slide. Coffee. All right, back to my slideshow. Now I have to find it again. I don't, I feel you should, the other funny thing is that in my new job, I have to use this thing called Slack. Mm. And on Slack, I always, every time I call someone, I hit screen share <laughs> instead of <laughs> like video display. So like, I have to make sure that I always have something very appropriate in my background. Right, yeah, there you go. Good. <laughs> always clicking it. Um, so this is another one that you're going to want to go watch the video afterwards because um, it's really cool. This is my friend, Josh Ajima. Uh, he sent this to me and this is like one of the most complicated yet not complicated scratch and makey makey projects I've ever seen. So what you do is like he's built the controller and then when you touch different parts, this house, the scenes change outside the window. Ooh. So it's this huge immersive art installation, which is something that if you're not an artist, you feel like you can't do. But suddenly with Scratch and Makey Makey, like you're able to do something you didn't think you could do before. Cool. Um, and this is over on Instructables. In fact, I can show you the Instructables because I did, I did a really good job of leaving everything open here. Good. Right. So there's, there's Josh's uh, Instructable. If you look up interactive art installation, you should be able to find it, but I'm also gonna share the link. And so when you, uh, a student made the scratch game and then there's what his uh, box looks like, his controller looks like. And the code is pretty complicated, right? And I kind of love that about scratch too. Like it can, it really has the, the high ceiling. Like it's really easy to get in low floor and there's really many possibilities. He's trying to scroll to his, uh, his crazy box. <laughs> there's there's not a finished box all right and then also uh i have john's which is this is hard because my uh my computer doesn't want to it's got the screen thing in the way no how do i click on the other tab oh is it like out of the way you can't catch it can't catch it you could pull the whole box down just grab the gray bar and pull your oh. whole thing down and then well that made life easier there's the explode the controller stuff too on Scratch. If you look up the hashtag, uh, um, he okay. was at Scratch and the Scratch conference and everybody was using the workshop things. I thought that was pretty cool. Great. And he's, he's got those projects for free on his blog. So that's nice too. Great. All right. So I don't have too many other things to share, but this is pretty amazing. Have you ever seen the, the tinkering with Rube Goldberg chain reactions done at tinkering studio with Rick or Rose? where they use Makey Makey and they actually have things. So I'll click over to the blog post on it. Yeah. Um, they actually set up like this huge thing 
and you'll have to watch these videos uh, where things come into the scratch screen and then out of the scratch screen, like so that that uh, cue ball, whatever you want to call it, pool ball, starts yeah. rolling after the pool ball and the screen hits the certain edge. No like way. It starts rolling. Yeah, they did these crazy, crazy uh, chain reaction things that are amazing. So I put that in there just as like a go watch this. Like Great. You have to go see it. And then my last thing to share, and then if you want to just ask me random questions, um, is the Makey Makey lockbox from the book that I can't find the actual one. But amazingly, it's really easy to make. It's just right. like you just take some copper brads and you put them in. So this is like if you want, want to do breakout EDU, but you don't want to buy one of those locks that cost. Uh, what are the, how much? The weird, I, yeah, I don't know. They keep changing in price. They're like, they're expensive. Those combo yeah. locks are like $20 a piece. So you can make your own with scratch and makey makey um, inside. I've just Here's labeled share screen so we can see it a little closer. Oh yeah. I forgot. I forgot about the square sheets. Okay, okay. So this is just my spark fun box. Right? Oh, do we have to have a spark fun box for it? I mean, I have some, but. Yeah, it so has cute. to be a spark fun box. <laughs> right. Jeff, Jeff Branson, you, you pay us credit every time we say that. That's spark uh, fun. So I, I should expect free spark fun products. For yes. Them. <laughs> right. Uh, so you can, I just like wrote what, what key presses it is. It's just normal key presses. Oh, nice. And then I would plug in the Mickey Mickey. So um, I did that thing again where I like lost my Mickey Mickey. That's okay. I didn't lose it. It's right here. So it's really easy when you use these like bra brass fasteners, you can do anything with them and you can clip on really easy and not have to worry about it going anywhere. Love like it. it's clipped on, it's super easy. Yeah. And I'm gonna show you the crazy scratch program. So you can create a list <laughs> in scratch. Did you know this? No. Yeah, so you can create lists which are sort of like arrays. Burr, 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 burr. There's my funny sound. All right, so here's the, here's the program. Uh, that runs the lockbox so that when you're pressing on the keys, you have to figure out. So this, the way I designed it, and it doesn't have to be like this, but the way I designed it was to be like a logic puzzle itself. Like how am I gonna get my numbers to match the open sesame numbers on the scratch screen? So you see my open sesame? Yep. So I have to figure out, you just said no or yes? No, yeah, I can see it. Okay, I was like, oh no, he can't see it. <laughs> so I have to figure out what's gonna be three. So what would be three? What do you think would be three on my my unlabeled buttons? Oh, um, the third one, the top right corner. Right, the third one. So when I press, um, now I gotta look. When I press the up arrow, which is what the top right corner is gonna be. Oh, that's actually one. But mm. if I press the down arrow, I hit two mm. in that top box. If I press the right arrow, I go to four. So like there, there's three, right? That would be my third brad. And then how do I get number two? Well, then you start having to like add things together. So if I want nine, I have to add some things together. I made this part kind of complicated, but once you get the code, then it opens Sesame. It could also be like the coin trick, except it, mm. it's going to start the game. So like maybe once you break the code, because I just dragged these, right? I yeah. could have a whole game behind them. I could have them disappear when I'm done. Um, let's see if I can match the code. Yeah, I mean, you could even use multiple coin slots to, to press different numbers, right? And right, you could do the same thing. Make it could be the physical. same thing. Yeah. So the point really like of writing the book was to get people beyond the banana, right? Beyond yep. the banana piano and to kind of go further. And let's see, so nine. Oh, I'm trying to guess it without using my lockbox. It's so much easier <laughs> when it's actually hooked up to the box. Yeah. Oh, because I have to press like two things. There, I got nine. I'm not sure I can get 16. So anyway, that's like the, the like biggest, that's the highest ceiling I've made, like is okay. the, the lockbox and coming. Does it in. actuate it when it's done? Does it yeah. actually, okay. Yes. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Wow, I'm just, cool. Cool, and you break the lock. So these are made in the, uh, move that, in the data, you can make a list. And then basically this code is just allowing you to, um, like replace each item in the list un until you get the buttons right. Hmm. I've never seen, never, never used the list. I've made yeah. a variable, but not a list. Look, I've showed yeah. you a new thing. Uh, thank you, Colleen. I appreciate that. <laughs> he was like, we're going to be talking about bananas for an hour. And I'm going well, to- Well, I know. I was going to, I don't even have any bananas. All I had was oranges <laughs> to bring, and I thought that's going to be messy. So Jason's got a question for you. Um, okay. You can go back to the slideshow stuff too, but I'll throw it in there. He was talking control. When you're talking controllers, he said, 
Um, thoughts on students creating collaborative game controllers in which they depend upon each other. Oh, I love that. Have you seen people do that? Um, I, I love it. I love it. Um, I saw someone do it a really long time ago and then Aaron did it last year for like a STEM night. And what they did is they had earth in the center with like a hula hoop, like an alum aluminum foil hula hoop. And the kids had to hold hands and then hold like a, a like let's say a foil sword. They took like a LARP sword and covered it with foil. And they had to run and press either like front, middle or back. And they would run back and forth in the library. But connected with somebody else's hand? Yeah, they had to hold hands. Yeah. So yeah. like three kids had to hold hands to go toop, 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 toop. Yeah, I love that. That's fun, I like that. Great. Anyone else have any other questions for Colleen? Or you wanna tell us other things you've been working on? Um, the other things I've been working on are secret. Well, I know, that's what I'm asking. <laughs> <laughs> so no, I don't want to talk about this <laughs> live. <laughs> oh, you know what? I did forget to show you this one thing. Um, this is like another untapped resource that's been hiding and I put it on all my new, actually I could show you, I do want to show you something else I totally forgot about. You're right. Okay. Uh, but this is just a really easy PDF you can print out. I've been using this for years and I assume Joy Labs made it and it's just setting up scratch and like the easiest thing of when I press space, do meow. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I've also got all these blocks. I've started printing them out because it's just easier that way. Uh, so we have uh, been working on Makey Makey Labs and it's getting updated like as we speak. Great. And this is just a place to share your own work, like your work with students and you can tag it by whatever, uh, subject level you think it is and whatever grade level you think it is or you can also search this way and the thing i made the most recently which is sad that it's in a whole other room right now is the gigantic playable makey makey oh, yeah i saw your your tweets on that instagram post yeah. great yeah so it's a giant makey makey that you can play and i actually think creating that with kids is a really good way for them to kind of learn how to create conductive squares and circles and things and then hopefully then you can teach them how to make switches and kind of go on from there yeah so, so i've been working that, on yeah with kids i mean you've you've had elementary experience and high school experience yeah right so what where do you see people landing with making makey projects and scratch and kind of what's the what's the good entry and and for different grade levels and then you know, what are the things that you you see them as capable of doing kind of having some guardrails you know like you said with the dress you can't just make a dress um sometimes <laughs> you know even though you know how so what are some of those safeties that you put on to get them to have success and now i'm really sad that i'm in the wrong office because i have my kid friendly alligator clips i posted last week did you see those you can take us on a tour of your house no i don't want to do that <laughs> <laughs> mute your video view my video and go get it uh, but those kid friendly alligator clips are like made with a clothespin are a really easy way to like start doing things with kindergarten and first and second. And mm -hmm. last year, what I did was actually I used this similar concept to this, uh, except I had all of these buttons with a word and then I made a word wall um, and kindergarten kids were able to um, do a sight word matching game that they weren't able to do without knowing um, the words because they can't read, but they could see the word, like they would take the word and they would come put it here and they would touch the button and it would say swim. And they'd go, oh, I know this is swim now. And they'd find the picture of swimming and were able to play the sight word game. My, oh. kindergarten, my kindergarten teachers were like, oh, this is amazing. Right. What is yeah. this thing? Uh, and that is a really cool entry way to get littles into it. But then also take that and show your fifth graders and say, hey, can you make word games for kinder and first. Yeah. Like, can you find another way to make this? And then um, fourth grade is all about learning circuits. So just like doing this simple circuits challenge. I actually completely updated this uh, because when I wrote this three, four years ago, I think that I understood circuits, but I understand them much better now. So I, I rewrote this whole project uh, this last couple weeks to kind okay. of explain how to make a simple circuit and how to play with, um, I gotta show you the, the switches because these are my favorite, the DIY switches. So like you can use Play-Doh, but you can also use a brass fastener. You can use a leaf, you know, you can use right. water, 
you know, just start starting to get kids into thinking like, how can I make a switch with other materials? Uh, and then uh, looking at parallel circuits and there's one of these where it's like kissing pennies. I'm trying to find my kissing pennies, but I can't find them. Oh, I think they're at the very top. That's at the end. There's the kissing pennies. Oh, nice. <laughs> but like, this is a really good uh, starter for probably fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. Like, it just depends on how much your kids have done with circuits. Like, I know that I did it in fourth, but when I did circuits in sixth, they'd already forgotten, right? Because yeah. like fourth is the only grade that we're supposed to teach it. And then like they're not supposed to teach it and kids are supposed to remember it. I don't right. Know. Right. Yeah. Spiral uh, around. Yeah. So like this, I could see going all the way. I mean, it really, you could keep doing it all the way up to ninth grade and kids would probably still have fun. You can't do it every year, but it just depends on who you are and what's been going on at your school. Yeah. Uh, and then the um, high school, this is actually something I really wanted to talk about that <coughs> I'm glad you asked me okay. because I've noticed what I've noticed is people <clears throat> sort of their their thumb up or their thumb up or their nose up it's scratch sure. like they're like those are blocks and we're not into that and that's not you know my middle school and high school kids are too big for that that's not true right like it's just not true I've had um, I had some high school kids that wanted to make games with unity or whatever and I was like that's great we can't download that software we can't do this we can't do that like but we can use scratch why don't you use scratch so these seniors in high school uh, built this insane game like an rpg with scratch it didn't have to do with making me but they were still building it they were designing characters in illustrator and then putting them into scratch and then they made this like really sophisticated game with like so much code and i think that's just really cool it like teaches kids how like it kind of teaches them the basic verbiage of coding like what a forever loop is what an if then statement is and what if else statement, how are these are different, you know, and they just learn things that they're going to need to know if they want to go further. But I think that's what's great about it. Not every kid has to learn JavaScript or like. Does does Scratch 3.0 ha allow you to see the code kind of underneath the hood like make code does, do you know, yet? I'm I can't remember. I suppose we could go look right now. I know make code. The reason I like make code is that you get to a certain point where you can't use the blocks and you're like, I really need an array function and I don't have it. So yeah. now I need to learn Java, but it gives you a place to, to go, oh, okay, I'm going to learn this. Um, so that's, that's funny you mentioned that that happened with me last week. I was, uh, I had talked to Josh Caldwell from um, code.org mm -hmm. and he was taking the projects from our big maker book and trying them with circuit playground. And I was like, oh, that's a fun idea. Like I made that, I made this guitar with a lily pad controller that you strum. So yeah. the motion sense, it's the air, the light sensor. Uh, when, if the light is covered, then play Iron Man. Uh, yeah. Right. right. So I had done that, which is really complicated in Arduino to program. And I was like, oh, can I just do that in make code? And like, I can but it didn't do the same things I wanted. And Josh said that as like, once you kind of get into the JavaScript, I could get it to do it. I can't do it with blocks, but right. I could do it like if I got further into learning JavaScript. And that's kind of what I said. I was like, oh, I guess I need to go learn JavaScript now. Right. Well, but it gives you, it gives you the reason. I think it gives the kids the reason too. So, I mean, there's definitely two schools of thought of, of programming and um, coding, but I'm, I'm more on the block programming side, you know, an ends to a mean or a means to an end. Um, as you get going and then you're going to hit a wall where you you just don't have the ability to to go further um, all right you know, and I, projects oh go ahead oh i was just gonna say i see that that's what i see like makey makey and scratch as a prototyping tool right i'm gonna create the prototype of this thing because i remember showing the lockbox to a kid and he was like well i could just do that with raspberry pi great go do that now yeah right right i'm glad you figured that out yeah go do it now uh, but I think that's like what's really cool is they're like a prototyping tool and they're teaching our kids the design process and how to make di different iterations of things because those are like words they don't know right yeah. until we start teaching them so right. yeah and back to well back to the um, ideas for high school students and kind of easy mm -hmm. entry um, you know, I had a discussion with a Mandarin Chinese teacher said well how am I going to add making and hands-on and I said well makey makey conductive <laughs> paint kanji test review Right. Right. And so so now it's like your word game, but it's for high school students and they get to program it with their voice and then go around the room and touch other people's and do a quiz review. Right. I mean, it's just collaborative. I, I, 
saw someone do a social studies thing like that. It was a huge map. And then you touch yep. different parts of the map and they had programmed it to say things. Uh, when I was in high school, we did blackout poetry like that. And the kids yep. made poems with blackout poems and then they recorded their voices. And what's amazing about creating poetry with scratch and makey makey is that kids who have never, I taught English for like a decade. Okay. Mm -hmm. A decade. And when I would tell kids to read a poem in class, I got physical computing is a banana. You know, like they were like, it was awful. But when I had them record their own voice in scratch, they were like physical computing, you know, like they're using tone and they're using like, they're using fluency and they're actually speaking a poem the right way, like yeah. with enthusiasm versus that like- that conductive one, yeah, right. <laughs> but that conductive project for Blackout Poetry, did you have them just record, you know, stanzas and, and voice, real voices, or did they add in sound effects to like Edgar Allan Poe? I mean, what, what was the things you saw with that? They did both of those things. Um, I had kids where, well, I did it, I did it once where it was illustrating a poem. So they did four drawings that would visually represent the poem. And then they read the poem and they actually touched each drawing to read the poem. Mm -hmm. And I had a girl who did the road not taken and she did put sounds and music in it. Okay. And like, it was really cool. And then I had, I did have them, some kids do sound effects. Uh, and then I did that again in fourth grade and they did a great job with it. And then um, I had during the blackout poetry, what was cool is that was their first introduction to Makey Makey and they learned how to make a circuit. So it's kind of, they're remembering how to make a circuit. And we actually did troubleshooting by drawing circuits with pencil lead mm -hmm. and it was really cool. And they mostly actually said the stanza of what was in each thing that they blacked out, right? Cause they're creating a poem from someone right. else's words. And they loved it. They were like, we got to steal poetry today. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I loved that. And uh, they, it was kind of a fun copyright lesson. Don't steal more than three words at a time. Like once you get to three words, you're copywriting. But if you go three words and under, you can actually use those words and like make your own thing. Hmm. Uh, but they had, uh, they, they mostly just said the words, but there were some kids that would go beyond that and have the words pop up in scratch. Oh, ah, okay. Right, so they're adding a little bit more code. So I think that's that's where it gets interesting is when it inspires them to use Scratch more and do more things. Yeah. Like I had a kid last year do use Scratch. She was a gifted kid, but she used Scratch to like create a play, an animated play that she could show all her learning. You know, yeah. like kids do really amazing things when you give them freedom and choice. So. Yeah. All right. So I got one more question. So on your on your feeds, you've been doing this somehow. Oh yeah. What, so tell us, tell us about how, how you smashed these together and what was kind of the process of Microbit and Makey Makey and was that part of uh, kind of revamping your same ideas? Yeah. <laughs> um, I met Hal for Microbit and I was like, we can use these two things together. Let's do it. And I tried it and it worked. And so then I think I spent a week like just kind of thinking, okay, I can do this. But also to get Microbit to work with Scratch 3, you have to download something called a scratch link and it's all something Craig Hanning made from MIT. And mm -hmm. it's really cool, but it's a little bit hard to get started. Right. Okay. And then, um, but once you do it, all you have to do is an extension with microbit. Once microbits in there, it's the same way you program anything with Mickey Mickey. So all I did is when I press space key, put a B on the microbit mm. and it put a B. And I said, when I press the right arrow, put an A on the microbit and it put an A. And then I'm, I'm just thinking that trying to get back out to the physical world, getting over the 4.5 volt limitation, if you may, of Makey Makey, um, this could be a really interesting way to go in out to the micro bit and then actually have it actuate LED lights or, you know, right. more than just even on the, on the built-in right. display. Right. You could have it do whatever you want it to do, like uh, use right. the outputs for other things. Yeah. Uh, but micro bit doesn't do motors so well so that you're still not really getting that. I think if yeah. you wanted to do that combination, it'd probably be Hummingbird. Like okay. you could do Hummingbird. Um, Katie from Hummingbird or Bird Brain Technologies told me about a project where it's a drawing of a dog and then they built a cardboard dog. And then like you could pet the dog and it would bark and you could pet the dog and it would wag its tail. Cool. And that was through Makey Makey and Hummingbird. Okay. Huh. Yeah. So, cool. I mean, there are things like that. Those are some other things I'll be playing with like this year to, to introduce it. Great. Great. Um, let's see, I have one question. Got a 
find it here. Sorry, it's not <laughs> right in front of me. It got lost. It did. It's unfortunate. My phone was was dying. Uh, it was a library question that I thought would be great. Oh. I know. Did I show you these? I feel like I pulled these out and I forgot. So these are a good place for little people to start when they uh, haven't learned scratch yet. This is actually how my nine-year-old learned scratch at six was playing with these scratch cards. You, you can download them for free, but they're okay. such nice quality and they're from No Starch Press. I just like buying this. It's like 20 bucks for these scratch nice. cards. Nice. Okay, great. I'll put... Have little... Yeah. Yeah, maybe send me the link or I'll look them up. I'll put them on... On, on Facebook and YouTube and the comments too. Sure. All right, here's the question. So um, what do you see the future of maker education in schools? Where is it going? Oh um, how do we keep up with new things? What a question. That That's not the library one, but I figured I'd throw it out there. That's a mean question to end this whole. <laughs> well, we won't end it. I've got hot seat questions to end it, don't worry. Uh, I think like, I think that it's really, been a strange transformation watching this happen online. And there are so many people that are just beginning their journey. And I think that's um, that's kind of where it's interesting, right? It's the sustainability is the, the question because we see people starting and we see them using things and then we see 3D printers in closets, right? Or not being used. Or the person who knew how to use everything leaves, right? Like let's say I, I left and now they don't know. Um, and I think Maker Ed is doing a lot of work uh, Aaron Vanderfurf is like doing a lot of work to get that sustainability model out there. And, um, you know, Robert Provenos too, right? They're doing yeah. this really cool stuff where they're putting making in schools and actually making it part of PD and trying to grow the whole community. So there's not a maker champion like at the school, right. so that if someone leaves, it's still sustainable. So I really think like what we, the future is how to figure out sustainability. Okay. Like being able to provide resources and yeah, like the scratch cards or the, the PDF that you thought everybody knew about for how to get into it and have those. Well, and ready. finding those building blocks so that you do banana piano and then you teach kids scratch and then your kids make breakout boxes or word games or whatever. And then we're not seeing a stagnant list of projects. We're, say we're seeing like growth and seeing that high ceiling being reached. That's good. Yeah. All right. Here's the librarian one. Um, okay. How do you, and we've talked about this a little bit, that's why I wanted to pull it in. How do you get maker education integrated into other subjects, which we've talked a few ideas. As a librarian though, how do you help staff make, um, add making to that to the classroom, make that connection? Like, I mean, you used to curate a kit of books, right? And, and show people how to do this for history or whatever unit they're studying. How do you do that in the maker area? So um, when I was a librarian, it was always about being an instructional partner, and that really worked well in secondary, but in elementary, like elementary librarians are the teacher in the library, like it's a secret and you don't know about until you go work, I guess, in <laughs> <laughs> elementary library. So um, last year, I tried really hard to work on things that teachers wanted to work on in the library, and I would still have to develop the lessons. So like I did the scratch poetry. And I, tr and I did talk to the teachers about how to do it and having them come down, but it wasn't as collaborative as I wanted, like in the elementary setting. And I just think that's probably a hurdle for, for most librarians. But I think what I'm seeing a lot of is, um, I know there are people doing really cool stuff in public libraries where they're loaning out kits with books and, um, and materials in them. So even at my public library here, I could go check out a Raspberry Pi and bring it home. And it comes with a book, right? And that's cool. Um, and actually, I talked about that when we wrote the Big Maker book, I tried to get Dimco to make like kits that went with it. So like you could have a sewing circuit, like there's a sewing circuit chapter, you could have all the supplies in a sewing circuit kit, and that would be a thing that you could buy and you could make everything from that chapter. Mm -hmm. Seems right. like a good idea, right? Spark sure. fun? Wink, wink. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, I think doing things like that, that just makes it more accessible when you have the materials and the instructions yeah. or some materials in some kind of challenge to do some kind of like springboard. I think when you give kids just materials and no like nudge, there's it's, you have that white paper syndrome, right? Like writing a paper, where am I going to start? What am I going to do? And so I think prompts to make things are sort of like writing prompts. It's not the only thing. It's just something that you have to kind of add in if you're feeling like, oh, I don't know what's happening. So, you know, that first 
um, really big success I had with a design challenge was the Makey Makey Challenge that I did with Diana Rendina's students and my yeah. students at a middle school. And that was like, all I did was say, you have to make game controllers and you have to make a game in Scratch. And that's mm -hmm. like, that's in labs now. And it's been in there for years. And it's really cool to like, see what kind of games they can create and what kind of controllers they make. Yeah, so. great. That's perfect. Um, We've got a question that says uh, they're in Egypt. Sorry, the side of it's cutting off. And um, first language is Arabic. And I've seen Scratch available in Arabic. Is there, are there also plans to have Makey Makey Labs available in Arabic? Wow, um, we, can, we can see about that. We actually, I think that, the, that so many of us rely on Google Translate to just like translate pages that, that we don't often think about that, but we could go and, um, we would have to pay for that, right? Like the, the company would have to pay for that, but I can but ask. Even, maybe even just a, the, the intro sheets or something to get kids jumping in. Um, it's a good idea, but. Yeah, it's a really good idea. Yeah, thanks for asking. There's so right. much content that I'm gonna create for labs that. All right, we're excited. All right, so I've been ending all these sessions. Um, we're at 45, so I'm gonna end it now, but yeah. I've been ending them all with uh, with a couple questions, kind of hot seat, you know, ESPN style, and if you're in sports, but. Um, and so I just, I just give you a question she hasn't heard before, and then you get to answer it. Okay. You ready? Okay. okay. I didn't hear all those other ones before. I'm but. opening up my Amazon cart here. I've got $300. What are you buying? For what? What are you buying? What are you buying for yourself? Like maker or for students or what are you, what are you buying for your child? Or something has to do with maker, but I got $300. Uh, open up right now. Fabric tape. Okay. LEDs. Um, I would probably buy like, I, like if I were going to go take this to my husband's school, I'd probably go ahead and buy him a class set of Makey Makey's and what else would I get? To me, it's all about this stuff. Like I would, I like, I don't buy stuff. I like cardboard. I like paper clips. I like everyday right. stuff that I turn well, into that's, things. That's too cheap. I mean, the Makey Makey's, I guess can take your 300 bucks, but, but <laughs> you know, other than that, I mean, we got like. You got like 50 bucks left. I know. I don't, I'm not good at this. Okay. I'm, I'm the cheap, I'm the cheapo like okay. maker librarian. Well, that's so. good. Okay. So you're saying craft <laughs> supplies and everything else is, is good enough. Oh, googly eyes. I'm going to buy $50 worth of googly eyes. <laughs> I think Hubbard wanted googly eyes too, Jason, if you're on. Didn't you want googly eyes? You guys and your googly eyes. <laughs> googly eyes make the project. Oh. Man. Well, look at what I just showed you. It was like cardboard and brass fasteners. This is card cardboard and paper clips and copper tape, yeah, yeah. duct tape. I mean, that's what I'm about. Yeah, this no, is low tech making. Yeah. And uh, washers. Yeah. yeah. We don't yeah, it's it's sometimes we we buy the robots when and then they sit in the closet, like you said, 3D printer in the closet. Right. So yep. I think accessibility and getting kids into it is is there. So thank you. All right, second question. I'm trying to make oh, I was trying no, to no, trying to make a classroom booster pack. Oh yeah, I know. Yeah, if you have ideas for classroom booster pack. Hey, can you, can you uh, pitch your, um, and I'm going to pitch mine too. We've got two survey links. I'll repost them. Um, oh yeah. Colleen and I both have one. She stole my idea or I stole hers. Okay. We won't let you know. I stole your idea. Oh, whatever. <laughs> um, you asked. So, um, but we do have a survey just like asking people with true design thinking in mind, what do you need? Because both content or both of us are content creators and trying to help get the maker of uh, evangelism out there right and, and <laughs> into the hands of people so so there's two surveys we'll post them uh, i'll try I'll retweet yours colleen you retweet okay. again and um, after this on twitter and and they'll be there but yeah it's just one simple question like what do you want takes a minute yeah. type it in what do you uh, want what do you need us to do to help you make stuff yep yep we'd love yeah. to um All right, i have another question. question i know i can't remember what it was now Oh, the project you're most excited about for the future. And I know there's secrets, so you can't tell me all, but project most excited about for the next year. Okay, so Aaron and I have actually been working on something for Makey Makey that I'm gonna get to finish now that like I'm full-time doing this, but we've been working on something that's gonna work with the new product and this and actually lots of other things. And that's what I'm excited about. And it's right. kind of, a, again, about just like, it's going to be low cost and easy for people to do. So. Cool. And when will we all get to know that? Is that before Christmas secret? I don't know. And I'm also really excited about that sewing circuit project I was telling you about that I haven't decided what I should do with it. Like, yeah. 
write a book, post it on Spark Fun, make an instructable. I don't know. Yes, yes, and yes. <laughs> All the things. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you should have your daughter have a little segment in that book because your daughter cranking out sewing projects was. She is wow. deep. I actually had to ground her from the sewing machine. That's my <laughs> oh, new, like. Oh, wow. Tough <laughs> when she's mom. like, I know, well, she, she doesn't care about anything when you ground her from it. So I was like, okay, I'll take the sewing machine away. And then I was like, I feel bad. <laughs> I have to ground her from reading too, so. Oh, okay. Well, hey, first of all, problems here, you know, it's good. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, hey, Colleen, thanks so much for um, chatting with us. And yeah, I'll be posting these great. on YouTube, uh, Facebook. I'll be turning that you guys off um, from Facebook Live here in a second. If you ask questions, I'm sorry, I didn't have that stream up. And so um, I will uh, get them answered here later. So, Colleen, and this is our last free oh. PD for the summer. Yeah, I got? had one question about okay. training. No, not me. Someone in the chat um, oh. about training outside the U.S. So just tell the uh, telling you all that oh, yeah. Tom and I are working on online PD for people that Perfect. in other countries. So sorry. Great. Okay, good. Yeah, I didn't catch the second part of that question. You finish your wrap up there. No, no, sorry. thank you. No, no. And um, yeah, I'll be posting all this stuff out there. And then we're also going to just have a meetup. So anybody that wants to pop in in about 10 minutes to um, the other room, let me put it in here to everyone. You can drop in on, oh no, that's that's Colleen's presentation right here. If you'd like okay, to look thanks. at that one. And then um, I'm gonna have to exit full screen here in a sec. I, see, I copied your link, Colleen, and now I don't have my you own. You lost your own. I know, look at that. <laughs> anyway, there's another one. Uh, check out on Twitter on YIT Making. It is right there on YIT Making. And we'll see you guys next time. Um, somebody asked if we'll be doing regular ones again. We're not doing them regular except for in the summer. Um, but if you know, if I have time and um, during the winter, maybe I'll do another one during the breaks. Like maybe we'll do a couple over Christmas break or something. We'll see. We should do some live making. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, you know, the other thing, the whole reason we did this and then we'll end is is just to get people together, hang out, and yeah. talk about what we're all doing. Because, like you said. Um, you're the teacher, you're the, you're everything in the library and you're the champion and there's no one else around you. So I want to get all those champions from each school in the same room and let's just yeah. chat. That's the whole point. Yeah. So. It's good. Cool. All Thanks right. For having me. Hey, you bet. Thank you too. Have a great day and we'll talk okay. to you later. All, all right. right. Bye.